you're at the high nibble for the more significant bits. The copy of the MSA 8080 Microcomputer System User Manual I have begins with a chapter on general assembly and test instructions. After 34 pages of unpacking and assembly instructions, you finally get to the System Functional Test Instructions beginning on page 34. On the next page, two test programs are provided. And on the following half a dozen pages, a detailed walkthrough is provided for entering the programs, stepping through them and running them. I'm going to work through that a little bit more quickly for you to show this replica MSA 8080 in operation. So we begin with turning the power on, and the computer begins with the processor in a halted or wait state. If we lift the reset toggle, the machine to reset the machine, the address bus or program counter is returned to address zero, and the random byte value stored at address zero is displayed on the data bus. I'll begin with entering test program one, which starts with octal 333. I'm most comfortable with working in Octal on this kind of front panel since I first learnt the program in machine language on a PDP-11. However, the program listings in the manual include the byte values in hexadecimal, binary and Octal. So we deposit 333 Octal in the byte at address 0, which is an instruction to input a value from an I.O. port. So we follow that with the I.O. port number 377, which we deposit at address 1. I'll continue keying in the rest of the program. If you're interested in, in the details, you can follow along in the user manual. I've provided a link to a copy of the user manual in the description below. Having entered the program, I'll return to address zero and step through the memory, examining each byte to check that the program has been correctly entered. Everything looks okay, so again, I'll return to address zero and this time we're going to single step through the program. So according to the status byte, the processor is in the instruction fetch cycle for the input instruction. Then we're doing a memory fetch to get the IO port number. And now you can see from the status byte that the processor is executing the input instruction and that the address bus shows that the input is from port 377 octal or FF in hex. Now, as I turn on the programmed input switches that are connected to the IO port, the data bus lights up corresponding with the position of the switches. Because I'm single stepping through the program, the value hasn't been output to the program output yet, but I can do that now by single stepping through the output instruction. So there's the output instruction. There's the IO port number, again, 377 octal or FF hex, but the output port is connected to the row of LEDs in the top left corner of the panel labeled program output. You'll notice that the displayed value is the complement of the input value indicated by the switches in the programmed input and the byte on the data bus. This is a characteristic of the MSA 8080 CPA front panel where the programmed output lights are inverted. If we now stop single stepping and instead simply run the program, we can see the results in real time where we can change the value in the programmed output by changing the positions of the switches in the programmed input and it will always be the complement of how the switches are set on the programmed input. And that's the reason for the test program too. The second program adds a complement accumulator instruction between the input of the value from the programmed input and the output of the value to the programmed output, so that the switches and the lights directly correspond to each other. So I'll halt the processor and return to address zero and input test program two.
There's the complement instruction. And now the rest of the program continues on the same. Now we're ready to run test program number two. And you can see that having taken the complement of the input and output that, we now get a value on the programmed output matching the keys on the programmed input. The strobing of the LEDs, particularly visible here on the address bus, appears to be an artifact of my video camera, and you don't see those happening on the front panel with your own eyes. That's all I wanted to cover in this first video, demonstrating the IMSA 8080 replica front panel and going through the system functional test in the same way you would have when you completed building the original IMSA 8080.